the modern age of gaming. What an era to be a part of, am I right? Due to the advancements in technology, it's never been easier for devs to truly express themselves. Both the barriers to entry are lower, and there aren't quite as many technological roadblocks as there were in the past. But not only that, there's never been a better time for those of us who play games to experience and relive the wide breadth of video game history. No longer do we have to pine over our inability to play a game because it has become rare, collectible, or unreasonably priced. Nor do we have to travel hundreds of miles to find that singular arcade cabinet we remember playing when we were children. And that's because with the advent of emulation and the push for video game preservation, access to many of these titles are quite literally at our fingertips. It also helps that there's a genuine desire from developers and publishers everywhere to keep their storied histories alive. <laughs> Not to say that many of us wouldn't go out of our way to experience the Honest to Goodness article, but it's nice to have that option as a fallback. And a perfect example of this is the Psycho Shooting Stars Alpha compilation from Nice America, which houses six classic arcade shoot 'em ups in one tidy package. Although they may not be a household name here in North America, Psycho has been an arcade staple in Japan since the early 90s. During that time, Psycho was most famous for their addicting, vertically scrolling shoot 'em ups that featured an interesting mechanic called the second loop, which is kind of a way for the developers to reward and challenge skilled players by allowing them to continue playing after completing the game. That, and it added longevity to what are typically short games. The caveat being, the difficulty would be increased by overwhelming the player with more accurate and aggressive enemies. Here and there, Psycho also tried to mix up the formula a bit with their games by experimenting with different and unique mechanics. Some featured horizontally scrolling levels, others weird and awkward aiming controls, and a few that even had a fun brawler style melee ability. But these innovations weren't always successful at least in my mind. Psycho was also less famously known for their erotic Mahjong games, but since this review is purely focused on their shoot 'em ups that discussion can be for another time. Besides, none of that infamous naughty business appears in the Shooting Stars Alpha collection, <laughs> unfortunately. What does appear on this collection is a nice spread from Psycho's rich history spanning six games ranging from their early days to just before they went into retirement. That alone is fascinating because it allows us to see how Psycho grew as a developer over the years, and how they adapted various mechanics from earlier games and integrated them into their later entries. Not only was it cool to see how they iterated upon certain themes, but also how they used tried and true mechanics in fun new ways. That being said, not all the games in the Shooting Stars Alpha collections were bangers. And when I say that, I'm specifically referring to Zero Gunner 2, which, if I'm going to be perfectly honest, was kinda terrible. And its weakest point was its unintuitive control scheme where you are required to wrap your mind around a strange pivoting system, meaning aiming and shooting was a pain, and more often than not led to frustration. I'm also guessing because of the focus on its bizarre controls, the developers needed to tone down the difficulty a bit. So basically, you're left with a bland, tedious, and slightly too simple shoot 'em up. It also didn't help that the background music and sound effects were inconsistent. At times, they are not existent at all, or muffled. But this could just be a problem with how it was emulated. Now, after spending some time with Zero Gunner and getting used to how it's played, I could see inklings of fun shining through, but I honestly had a hard time enjoying myself nonetheless. Then there was Soul Divide, which was much better, well, in theory, but I'm going to give this one a pass because of its unique concept. I really liked the idea of combining a shoot 'em up with a sort of brawler, so instead of there being a focus on shooting anything that moves, you use melee attacks and various magical abilities. Of course, just mashing that button is also an option, but you'll find out very quickly that the best way to be successful in Soul Divide is to figure out your enemy's weaknesses and exploit them. And that usually means saving up your magic points and unleashing your most powerful spell on them. Truthfully, Soul Divide has a ton of potential 
And if it wasn't for the bullet spongy enemies, the awkward hitboxes, and the unresponsive melee attacks, I could really see myself getting into it. It very much reminds me of Death Smiles, and I really like the idea of the rock, paper, scissors spell system. And that's not to say I won't get into it, especially since I'm curious to see how it plays out, but there's a whole four other games on here that are stealing all of my attention. And those games are the Strikers 1945 Trilogy and their fantasy-themed bastard love child, Dragon Blaze. Frankly, the three Strikers 1945 games surprised me the most considering, at a glance, they looked like your typical World War II shoot -em up But I think it was their simplicity and the fact that they took the core shmup concepts and did them right that made them so appealing. It also helped that in each game you had a wide variety of ships to choose from that had unique shot patterns, movement speeds, and special abilities. It really added to the replayability of each entry and made them addicting and fun. One of my favorite parts of the Strikers games was their multi-part bosses that usually ended with the destroyed ship transforming into a badass mech. However, due to the relative simplicity in both their scoring systems and your offensive options, short of Strikers 1945-3, they're easy to overlook. But it was cool to see how Psycho improved upon each of the Strikers games as you move from sequel to sequel. And that leads me to the real star of the compilation, at least in my mind, Dragon Blaze. Which if you didn't pick up on it, I may have crowned as the bastard child of the Strikers series. Well, that's because Dragon Blaze is basically the evolution of those games. And although on the surface it seems like a simple fantasy themed reskin of Strikers 1945, there's so much more to it. For one, there was a major improvement in its readability and graphical fidelity. For instance, the bullets are now colored pink, so they stand out from the background, much like what you would find in the finest cave bullet hell shoot 'em ups, like Mushihime sama. That alone makes it so much easier to see what's coming at you. Of course, that doesn't mean it's easier to dodge them, but at least you can see them. Then there was an enhancement to your offensive abilities, which was kind of a mix between the magic found in Soul Divide and the charged laser mechanics found in the later Strikers games. When it came to the laser shot, if you held your fire button down, you could unleash a powerful attack that consumes your magic gauge. Then if the going is getting too tough, you still have your magic bomb that has the ability to clear on-screen bullets and do massive damage. But the most interesting addition to Dragon Blaze is its Dragon Shoot mechanic, where your character will dismount the dragon and shoot it forward. The benefit of doing this is that you can typically destroy the bigger enemies in a single shot or quickly dispatch a boss in its second phase once it exposes its core. Of course, the downside is that you need to be relatively close to the enemy when you do this for it to be effective, meaning you'll be exposed and more likely to get hit. And that leads me to the final improvement found in Dragon Blaze, its scoring system, which implements an interesting risk-reward mechanic. Typically, when you destroy an enemy, they'll drop silver coins, but if you can defeat them with your riskier dragon shoot ability, the coins will become gold and give you significantly more points. This can even be used during boss fights. If you are able to destroy them with your dragon shoot while their core is exposed, then you'll defeat them instantly and gain a technical bonus which is worth a ton. Now this may not mean much for those of you that just want to play the game casually, but those of us that enjoy chasing that high score leaderboard, it makes the game more challenging and interesting. As some of you may already know, I have a soft spot for shoot 'em ups, so being able to play all these classic Psycho shmups was an absolute joy. Of course, not all the entries in this compilation were for me, but being able to see all the great work and experimentation that Psycho pulled off during their active development days was super fascinating. And whether your blood runs shmup, or you're just a fair weather arcade enthusiast, I think there's a lot of value in the Psycho Shooting Stars Alpha set of games, and I'd highly recommend you check it out. It's available right now on the Nintendo Switch, and that includes a super fancy limited edition that comes with a lot of cool swag. 